For those of you who may have missed the news this week, our nation heard the final word of an over 10 year long story. The Keystone XL pipeline was officially canceled this week by TC Energy Corporation. The plans for the pipeline were drawn in 2010, and in that year, the initial phase began. And just to date myself, that was the year that I graduated high school. Three different administrations have weighed in on the project. Countless local leaders um, in the Upper Plains states and in Canada have uh, commented, and thousands of protesters on both sides of the issue have had their voices heard over the last 13 years. Debate and controversy likewise fill our Torah portion this week. This week we read the story of Korach and his followers as they challenge the authority and the vision of Moses and Aaron. Korach demanded that any member of the community should be allowed to stand before God in the Mishkan. Korach even goes so far as to claim that Moses is acting out of selfishness by denying others the right to stand before God. Korach alleges that Moses no longer has the best of interests for Israel in his heart. What a claim. In response, Moses attempts to reason with these rebels. Moses reminds these dissidents that leadership is about facilitating a connection to God. Moses asks, is it not enough for you, Korach, that God has set Israel apart for a special relationship? The drama continues with Korach insisting that he could act as Aaron does in Torah, maybe even better than Aaron. Korach has neither been selected nor ordained as a priest. But despite that, Korach and his followers decide to make their own offerings to God. They take their own fire pans and incense and they burn them. These rebels prove that they could do the ritual, but what they lack is the meaning and the intention behind the sacrifice. The result? Let's just say that God was not happy. The drama of Korach's story ends with him and his followers being swallowed up by a giant hole in the earth. A bizarre yet rousing image. In the beginning, Korach had the best of intentions. He envisioned a community with more access for the layperson. He wanted to offer solutions to Israel's problems. But at some point along this journey, Korach lost sight of what his goals were. Rashi teaches us that Korach became so focused on his quest for power that he even went around camp at night attempting to drum up support on his behalf. He wanted access. But what caused his demise was a grab for power that was not his to take. Aside from the small number of people who supported Korach, he was not widely endorsed throughout the community. Korach lost sight for, of his life's mission, not once, but twice. The motivation for Korach's rebellion came from his inability to see beyond the moment. Rightly so, the rebels were unhappy with their situation in the desert, unable to cope with the feeling of wandering. Korach could only focus on the obligations that were placed on him as an Israelite. At some point, he lost the ability to see the greater purpose. He couldn't remember the wonderful privileges of being an Israelite. We all face this challenge from time to time in reciprocal relationships. And we learn the lesson to not act as Korach did. We wish to be able to take a step back and with clear vision, be able to remember the privileges, the beautiful privileges that come 
with the obligations. And the second instance in which Korah lost sight of his role caused his demise. After Korah confronted Moses, he attempted to drum up even more support than his original 250 followers. As he was able to persuade some to join his cause, Korah became obsessed with power, hyper-focused on overthrowing the existing order. Korah forgot the basis for his work. His noble calls for improvements fell on deaf ears as he was swallowed up by the earth. In this moment, it wasn't just God that Korach forgot. It was compassion. Compassion for the other standing across from him. Compassion for Moses and his role and his great responsibility. Rabbi Yitz Greenberg teaches that Korach lost sight of Moses' role as Rabbeinu, as teacher, as moral educator, and as protector. When time moves so fast, it's easy for all of us to lose sight of our end goals. An experience that I would venture to guess is common. Life happens, sometimes we change our minds, Korach erred, and his story was relatively short. But sometimes, sometimes the mission is so important, and its impact reaches far beyond ourselves. Maybe it's climate, or maybe it's another cause. But it reaches so far that it is our imperative to remain dedicated. Reflect on any cause for change throughout history. If any one organizing body lost their sense of vision, life today could be very different. So with the faint calls of Korach's rebellion in our ears, Torah asks us this week, to what cause in your life can you rededicate yourself? What visions of a better world could you sharpen this Shabbat for the benefit of us all? Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>